Today's video is brought to you by me. From enamel pins, prints, stickers, washi tape, and more, check out my website, caseygolden.com. Raise your hand if you remember these guys, these little paint pods that look like tiny little buckets of mystery paint. Are they acrylic? Are they watercolor? Who knows? They're very confusing. Not to mention they come with this abomination of a paintbrush. Everybody, everybody loves that one. Well, today we're going to be using this 42 pack of colors. Look how many colors. There's 42. We have neon, we have regular, we have sparkle. And today we're going to create a fun, Colorful illustration with these. Will it be a struggle? Probably. Let's get into it. First, we gotta swatch these suckers. One pack, two pack, three pack, four pack, five pack, six pack, and seven, oh gosh, packs of paint. Okay, this is really interesting. It says right here, add glitter, pearlescent, and texture mixing mediums to wet paint or layer over dry paint for special effects. I'm curious about this texture paint. What is that? I don't know. Let's swatch and uh, find out. I did actually want to do a quick layering test because I, I want to know how these paints layer. Let's put these away. I would like to test out the primary colors just because it's a really fun way to see how they overlap. Do they mix? What's going on? Let's find out. Start off with a little red circle here. Add a little bit of yellow and add our blue. Not the smoothest application as you can see. You can see pretty much every stroke I make with this paint, but I do want to embrace that along with the layering of colors. I think that'll be really fun to incorporate into a piece. One last test how do they gradient between colors? Again, a little chunky, but they do blend together somewhat pretty well. I mean, for what they are, it's about what I expected. Okay, we've swatched all of our colors. We've done some experiments. Let's do some sketching. So the question is, what are we going to draw today? I'll be honest, I've been very obsessed. I mean, I always like to draw cats, but I've been super into drawing cats lately. But you know what? Let's not just draw cats. Let's go a little different today. Let's draw a cat dragon. Now it has two mouths. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? Is this a dragon or a dinosaur? Hmm. It's a dragon. Look at that mouth. That's a dragon. Imagine like little dragon babies. Oh no. Something very colorful, obviously. I'm not going to use all 42 colors, but I do want to use a lot of them. Oh, I didn't even give them wings. I'm talking about flying. Oh, maybe it's like perched on it. Let's see. I already sort of drew it like it was going to be flying around the mountain. Can we bring it? We bring it back. Definitely no gravity happening over here. <laughs> Ooh, what if we had the dragon just vibing on a cloud? I really wanna play around with breaking the border and also giving our piece like a border of clouds or something. That might be kind of fun, let's see. Do we need mountains? Maybe a couple of mountains uh, breaking the border, maybe one here. Okay, most importantly, we need our cat dragon vibing on a cloud, you know, just doing what cats do, sleeping, being comfy. With a little paw, oh geez, that's pretty cute. Does it need a collar? I almost feel like it might need a collar. Like, does it belong to a witch or a wizard somewhere? Those ears look more like horns, so we gotta, we gotta work on that a little bit, but otherwise, that's pretty cute. Does it need back legs? Maybe it needs a back leg. I need more cat dragon in my life. This thing is absolutely adorable and I love it. Does it need a cat nose? Does that look like a dog? Oh jeez. That kind of looks like a cat. I can't tell if it looks like a dog, a cat, or a kangaroo. I think I need to work on the nose shape. Maybe it should be more like a heart or something. Definitely looks more like a dog like that. Okay, I actually really like the way that the cat dragon thing vibing on the cloud turned out. I think that one's really cute. Definitely play around with some blues to purples, bright colors, maybe some glitter, who knows? Yeah, I think this one, this one's gonna be cute. Let's do it. 
And you know what? Let's draw big. For some reason, I felt like going big this time around. It's been a minute since I've drawn a really big painting or drawing or illustration or anything. So let's do it. Plus those paints were kind of chunky and I just felt like a really small illustration wasn't gonna cut it. Anyways, let's jump into our first regret, masking fluid. If you're a regular on my channel, you're probably familiar with my struggle with masking fluid. I will go ahead and admit, yep, I put it on too thick, but you know what? It's because it was hard to put it on too thin. I did a test, it worked out perfectly, but I just knew when it came to the actual illustration, it was going to be a disaster. And spoiler alert, yes, this, this masking fluid destroyed my paper, but you know what? I still had fun and I still really enjoyed this painting, so. Here we go. That was our ominous application of masking fluid. Let's move on to the painting. So I did think about not using masking fluid for this piece because like I said, I knew it was gonna rip up my paper because I'm really horrible at using it. But I really wanted a huge focus of this illustration to be the background. And I really just wanted to be able to make this wonderful gradient with the texture of the brush and the paints and just go for it without worrying about going around the shape of the dragon and the clouds and making making sure everything looked perfect. I just wanted to be able to be free to work on that gradient. And can we talk about that sky? Going into an art supply that is for children, I always have very low hopes. I just wanna go in and have fun with it. But honestly, I kind of feel like this might be the most beautiful sky I've ever painted in my life. Those colors are amazingly bright and colorful and vivid. And I don't normally like to use sparkles or shiny paints, but I absolutely couldn't resist putting sparkly paint on this because it just made it look like clusters of stars and the brightness and colorfulness of the colors combined with the shininess and the sparkliness, it was perfect. I don't know what's wrong with me. Who am I? What happened to my poop green? I don't know, but this sky turned out so amazing. I threw on some stars using the sort of shimmery metallic paints and the sky was looking perfect. If you noticed earlier, I did throw a few spots of masking fluid down for stars. I just thought having that absolute white would look really nice for the stars. Don't think it was really worth it, but it also didn't tear up the page, so I guess that's fine. Anyway, uh, enjoy this compilation of my paper being absolutely destroyed by the masking fluid. Look at the damage. We love to see the damage. Go on everybody, cringe with me. disaster but to be honest I knew that because this paint was so chunky and it covered the page well I really wasn't that worried if I was using something like watercolor where the paint is literally water and just stains the paper so you will see the texture and the texture of the paper will not cooperate with a watercolor I felt a lot better these are chunky paints they lay on top of the paper so a textured paper really wasn't that big of a deal just don't look too closely at the painting and uh, you you won't even notice it. Lesson learned, I just need to do a lot more practicing with masking fluid and stop being afraid of it so I can actually get better at it. That's right folks, you can't get better at something if you don't practice it. So after the sky was done, it was time to move on to painting our dragon. Because the background was on the darker side, we had a lot of cool blues and purples. I thought it would be really nice to have the dragon a little bit on the lighter side, just so that it popped off of the page a little bit. And let's play around with a little bit of compliments. Yellow, purple, complimentary. We'll be adding some orange details later, which will also complement the blue. I really didn't want to overwhelm this illustration with too, too much shading. Y'all also know that when I I add shading to my illustrations, a lot of it is just, where does it look cool to have some shading? Does it make sense in a 3D world? No, and neither does a giant cat dragon chilling on a cloud one tenth of its size with no back legs, the front arms of a T-Rex, and the mass of its neck being more than its body. So, realism who? I don't know her. I only know fun shapes and colors. So, so far it was pretty simple, just laying down a flat color of yellow on our dragon. It was pretty easy applying the paint. I was sort of flying through it 
quite a bit when it came to the yellow. I think because it's such a lighter color, it was a lot harder to get that nice full coverage of the color. Thankfully I had, I think it was like two yellows. So I was able to use both of those and not run out. But I was getting a little scared that I was going to completely run out. There were also a few spots where the masking fluid didn't completely cover the page. So there was some blue of the sky on top of our dragon. And at first I thought that kind of sucks. The yellow is definitely not going to cover over blue paint. It's just too light of a color. I'm just going to embrace the messiness of this paint. It's a children's art supply. It's going to be sloppy. It's kind of fun to have little mistakes like that in traditional art because it's not perfect. And I kind of like that. I love embracing the mistakes. But then I thought after putting a few layers of yellow, why don't I just put some white down and then yellow on top of that? I did try a little bit, but because these are washable paints, when you apply an additional layer on top of another layer, it sort of reactivates it. So layering these paints wasn't the easiest, but if you worked really slowly and carefully, you could sort of work around that with a little bit of patience. So after adding some additional details, we have some lines for the scales, additional shadows. It was time to peel the rest of the clouds away on this illustration, which I was not looking forward to. It was very time consuming because of how stuck it was to the paper, but I pushed through. Like I mentioned earlier, I did apply the masking fluid too thick because I was having issues with it. But the first clouds that I put the masking fluid on with the outside clouds, those were a lot thinner because starting off it was easier and then my brush got clumpier and clumpier and it became harder. So the dragon definitely had more damage on it than the outside bordering clouds, which was a nice change, but it definitely still tore up the paper a bit. Definitely still had that issue. Speaking of issue, let's watch the biggest mistake of this painting. Yep. I was erasing some lines around where the clouds were. And like I mentioned, layering these paints isn't the best. So they're still kind of mushy and wet for a very, very long time. My eraser just picked up that paint and I didn't notice and spread it on the pure white cloud. Tragic, absolutely tragic, but we push on. <laughs> and to be honest, I actually didn't even notice it until I think the end of the painting. So I carried on with adding line work to this illustration. Originally, I didn't plan on adding line work to this illustration. I was hoping to just go into this piece and just use the paints and work in a lineless style. I sort of like to embrace these art supplies and use them as they are without any additional, I guess, artist grade supplies with them. But sometimes I just feel like you gotta do what you gotta do. So I did go through some soccer Micron pens and add line work. And I really think that just helped this illustration pop a bit more. It definitely needed a more solidified sort of line work and just something to sort of contain all of the sloppy, chunky layers. Speaking of sloppy and chunky, we did have an issue adding line work because the paint is sort of thick and just sitting on top of the paper. It was really easy to take the pen and just go through that layer of paint and just scrape it off of the top of the paper. So that was definitely not fun. Again, mixing artist grade and children's grade art supplies can be a mixed bag of results, but we pushed through. I think this illustration cute despite the issues. Speaking of issues, at this point I did notice the spot on the cloud so I tried to put a little bit of white paint over it. Definitely doesn't really cover it but you know what? I'll scan the piece and edit it out. You'll never know. After adding some textures in our dragon skin, that was it. Our cat dragon is done. I actually really enjoyed working with these paints. I thought I was gonna hate it. Kinda liked it and especially that sky. That sky is amazing. sure to check out my website caseygolden.com for all of your Casey Golden merch needs. Thank you guys all so so much for watching but before I go I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for all of the support. You guys are the best. If you want early access to these videos, monthly live streams, secret sketches, and more check out the link to my Patreon in the description. Thank you guys all so so much for your support. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!